Dennis Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside with a good group here today. Oh, I tell you, God, we got some great matches coming got up. Some terrific action today. We're going to have Harley Davidson in here. A single match. That'll get things underway. Then another single match. Humongous will be right here in the studio in the ring this week. PYT Express, Norvell and Stagger Lee will be going against Tommy Rich and Eddie Gilbert, the fabulous one, should be a super tag team match. That's Bugs, up. Yeah, Bugsy McGraw and Dutch Mantell will be here a little bit later on. Then six-man tag team action with Jerry Lawler, Scott Shannon, and Brickhouse Brown on one side of the ring. On the other, Jim Neidhart, Rick Rude, and Pork Chop Cash. What a six-man tag match that one should be. All of it coming up today. Ooh, hey, I think I'm going to stay around for the entire show. I <laughs> I'll tell you what, we better get started or we'll never get down to all the entire show. We'll be back in just one moment. Okay, we got lots of wrestling action, but how are you going to start a championship wrestling program without Jimmy Hart? Bobby, this is the greatest day of my life. Hey, don't you start off on any big My bodyguard. <laughs> Will you please just stand there, Jimmy? I have some VCR, the Jim Neidhart. I would like for you to take a look at. Monday night in Memphis, Tennessee at the Mid-South Coliseum, Jim Neidhart ran in on every match going. Don't start into anything. I want everybody to see it with you. Then I want you to tell me exactly what all this stuff is about. Let's take a look at it right now. Actually four. You count them seven, it? not three, not four, but seven skinny whites and little chumps try to interfere in my match. Listen, when I played football with the Oakland Raiders, I used to love it when someone used to pull my face mask or maybe clip me from behind when the referee wasn't looking. Well, the anvil takes care of his own business on his own time the way the anvil wants to. Right, Jimmy? You better believe it, big yeah. man, baby. My sergeant of arms yeah, and the baby. first family, my bodyguard from now on, baby. Woo! Yeah, fine. Well, you got a lot to be proud of. You end up ruining in the matches, jumping in there and beating up on people. Hey, they started it, chump. Not me. The animal fish is his own business. Those chumps started, and they're going to get it. This wrestling in the south down here is just beautiful, isn't it, Jimmy? He's made the order I for you, baby. I guess you can do anything you want to do. <laughs> I love it, baby. We wanted to see it. it. We wanted to see it and let everybody else see exactly what they are. Okay, we're going to get it ready to go here, Dave, after we listen to uh, my heart's feeble explanation of how Tommy... That's Rooster Cogburn that stepped into the ring right there, and the music signifies the big guy. You see him stepping up on the apron right there. Big Harley Davidson is in the ring. 
One fall, 10-minute time limit match coming up from Jackson, Tennessee, at 201 pounds, Rooster Cogbert. And here's Harley. I feel so bad today. I can almost cry. My feelings are hurt. Woo, my stones have been stepped on, baby. Yeah, they have. Let me tell you what's happening. Jimmy Nighthart, the anvil, hammerhead, or whoever you want to call him, he has overlooked me, apparently, Daddy, because he is running on everybody's match except mine. Lance, what can I do? What can I do? Oh, baby. You want Nighthart to run it. Elizabeth, I'm coming. Hey, let's let me tell you something, baby. Let me tell you something, squarehead Jimmy Nighthart. I'm going to be right in there, baby, and you can run right on in there. Oh, you want to? You can come and get some of me, baby, because I'm born free, baby, and wide and high. Look at me. Woo, here we go. Okay, Harley. <laughs> Harley complaining that he was overlooked in all the matches that <laughs> Nighthart jumped in on, so he invited him to come run, take a jump on to him right in there. He'd think a second time before he'd jump on that guy at 290. So, 290 pounds and about six, uh, he's about 6'5". <laughs> <laughs> oh, they love him. Big Harley Davidson. As he uh, is stripping for action in there now. I'll tell you what. Looking forward to this one is Big Harley Davidson going against Rooster Cogburn. Rooster Cogburn is a scrappy wrestler, let me tell you. He's never lacked for confidence. <laughs> But he may in a couple of minutes after dealing with Harley Davidson. Rooster back into action. Harley Davidson backed into the corner. Rooster Cogburn. Let's try to whip him out of there, but uh, Harley reverses it. And then, uh oh, Mr. Cogburn finds himself bouncing all over the mat. Rooster. Firing that right hand, the broad arm the fist, the open hand, try to pick Harley Davidson up. Uh, think again, he said, Harley picked him up with one hand, and bam, they just powered him straight down to the mat. Harley, whoa, just standing there waiting, two and three. Harley Davidson has himself a victory in this one in one minute, three seconds. Leaps over the top rope, down to the floor. Rooster Cogburn still trying to figure out what happened. That's right, baby. That's right. Didn't take you long with Rooster in there, but now That's right, buddy. That's it. That's the way it's coming down, you understand? I didn't see Mr. All right. Neidhart. I got something I want to talk about. All right. And you know what I want to talk about? Yeah. Before you get into anything, uh, let me let you catch your breath just a little bit. I want you to take a look at some action between Harley Davis and Dirty Rose and their opponents. Look at this. get the cane and bang dirty in the head with it. Week before, Daddy, the same thing happened to me, you understand? Yep. That's right. I didn't know what was coming down, baby. Them dirty dogs. Them pure yellow turkeys. That's what they are. Ain't no PYT, baby. Uh-uh. Pure yellow turkeys. They come down on my head. Now you see what they did to my man dirty. Let me tell you what, Lance. You see this? 
I'm going to take this this week, Daddy, and I'm going to do a number because I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have a motorcycle roulette match, Daddy. You know what that means? No. That means that there's going to be two poles there, people. That's right. Two. And there's only going to be one boot baby in one of them. And the team that gets that baby can romp and stomp and take it to them, baby. That's what we're going to do. Well, what? The other box is going to be in? Zero, baby. Come up with a hat oh. trick, baby. Reach for a bunny and get nothing. You understand? Oh. That's right. That's right. Well, I can't. Right here's what it's going to be, baby. And Jimmy Neidhart, run in there. Because let me tell you something. You're just like everybody else around here. you got a... A big mouth, baby. Well, I got it. We're going around through it over here. Well, I can back it up. Whoa. Okay, Harley Davidson. We're going to take time out. Be back. We got a lot of action to go. Be cool. Before we get into um, the next action in there, I've asked Jerry Jarrett to come out. Jerry, thanks for coming. It's been a long time, and I know you don't particularly care to come out here, but we've gotten into a situation that I find to be disturbing. And, boy, I'll tell you, uh, the situation I'm talking about is that Hart's first family, just stopping at nothing. They jump in there, and the, the thing that really has got me is the way they've jumped on Eddie Marlin. And, and, beating on the promoter and, and when I got up in the ring uh, when Eddie got hurt in there and looked at those eyes and I tell you it really worried me and it, it's a concern that the first family Jerry just seems to be getting away with anything they want they just seem to want to do anything and, and, and get away with it. Yeah Lance well when I was doing the, the actual matchmaking uh, the promoter has a, a complicated situation. Oh, no doubt I know he, that. He, He's constantly trying to please the fans and try to book who they want. A delegation. Is it, huh? Well, we, everybody's in. Well, we want to do more than listen. What we wanted to do, since you got him out here, this is a golden opportunity that we wanted to talk to you too. Uh, and of course, we've talked with Eddie. The situation. With Nightheart, Knight, uh, a lot of these guys, any guys that's in Hart's family, that thinks they can just run in and interfere in everybody's match, uh, as you said, Lance, has gotten completely out of hand. Uh, now, you know, I talk to a lot of the wrestling fans, and they, nobody likes it. Nobody wants to pay their hard-earned money, come to see the wrestling match, and see every match end in a disqualification, which is what a guy like Nightheart is causing. They want to, they want to go to a match, and they want to see who's the better man see who's the winner and who's the loser not every match in a disqualification like Nightheart is causing and uh, we just think that you know used to there was a way to settle this they used to if somebody interfered in a match you'd find them a thousand dollars am I right or not folks? find them a thousand dollars and the way we look at it just on last week alone Nightheart owes four thousand dollars in fines is that right or not yeah he did that's right yeah well that's that's exactly right that's what I was gonna get into Eddie called me about the problem and he said uh, Nightheart is here at the office, and he's claiming that that there is a rule. As the wrestlers come in, they get a, a sheet of rules, and he says there is a rule that says uh, the wrestlers are fined a thousand dollars for outside interference. Mm -hmm. This rule used to be activated. We have since. It's still a rule, but we've just let it lay. What he was wanting Eddie to do was find you, Idol, Dutch Mantel. Who wanted that? Nightheart, for what? because two weeks ago he claims and rightly so that seven people came to the ring well Eddie explained to them that in his match with you Tommy and Eddie that seven people came well the match got out of hand and Eddie asked Lawler and Mantell and and Idol to save them that's right to help restore order exactly you're gonna well, find us for that no we didn't find you or Eddie didn't and the reason was is that he requested it. Well, Nightheart's Heart, Night point was whether somebody sends them or whether they come mm -hmm. on their own, they would still outside interference. Yeah. So, what, what, what it boils down to is what are we going to do about it? I mean, how are you going to stop a jerk like Nightheart? What we're going to do about it is effective today, right now, and all wrestlers fall in the same category, whether they're sent or whether they go on their own. It's a thousand dollar fine if you step into the ring in a match that you're not booked in. Mm. And that, that rule is instituted for everybody. So, Jerry, I don't know how well you like all these fellas out here, 
But if you if you interfere in their match, no matter what the situation is, it's a thousand dollar fine. We have to restore the order. Is it going to be worth a thousand dollars? Well, I like them fine, but not a thousand dollars worth. I don't think I like them that much. That's that's fine with me. I don't interfere in somebody's match unless I'm, you know, unless Eddie Marlin asked me to go in and help somebody or something like that. But I just want it to be where Neidhart, you know, I want to deter to a guy like Neidhart, and I think a thousand dollars would. Uh, Are you hearing that, Jimmy that Hart deterring? and Jim Neidhart that's, and all? That's the new rule, and it's effective today. right today. Okay, well, Jerry, I appreciate that. Thank you guys for, for stopping in. Uh, a little clarification, I, and and uh, Jerry put it right. You know, a lot of the folks uh, upset, man. I, I came away uh, from the particular incident that we were talking about and saw. They're irritated because Neidhart ruined every match. Sure. He just ruined every doggone match out there. Well, I've been running on here. What? Oh, I know what we got. Guy that's been creating an awful lot of conversation. Big. I mean, humongous big. Let's take a look at it. Introducing from Memphis, Tennessee, at 215 pounds, Ken Raper. And going against him from Hollywood, California, 304 pounds, Humongous. In his corner, manager Jimmy Hart, one ball, 10 minute time limit match. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Willie Belgium, and we're off and running with Ken Raper, the unenviable task of getting in there against. 304 pounds, isn't that right, Dave? 304. Yeah, 304. Right. Boy, and he is big, too. Raper's tall, but uh, Humongous is even a little bit bigger. Wow, he blisters him on the rope. There's that clothesline that is absolutely like somebody teeing off with a king-size Louisville slugger on you. He blasted Ken, picks him up, slams him down, jerks him up off the mat by the hair. Referee says, look out, and... Raper popped down off the uh, top rope as Humongous dropped him hard. Puts him up again. Puts him down. Big elbow, and Ken Raper comes back with one to the middle. No effect whatsoever on the huge Humongous. The Southern Heavyweight Champion, by the by. Ken down hard off that top turnbuckle, backed into the rope. Oh! He almost knocked him right back over the top rope with that floor. Look at that. Raper down hard, and that's going to be it. We didn't have too much doubt as to how the match was going. One, two, three. over Ken Raper. Now he's got to pick him up and clear the ring by pitching him out on the floor. All right, Jimmy. Everybody's seen it all. Let's get him out of there. Humongous.
Dakota. Winner over 10 right for what kind of time, Dave? About a minute 18 on it, boy, I tell you. Just That's the old humongous. He beats yeah. up on the chair sure. after he gets through killing everybody in the uh, ring in there. Tell you what, not just Ken Raper, brother. Jerry Lawler's had some problems with him, too. Let's take a look at this action. I think you can identify that was Lawler laying down. He has a mask on, which was an excellent uh, uh, counter move to Humongous. But, uh, well, you're seeing that while it took care of some problems, there are others it didn't take care of. Let's watch. 2097. Lawler. Boy, that clothesline is knocking Lawler's pins right out from under him. Jerry whips in. fact when they started pounding away ox hit uh, jerry with that uh, heart punch and uh, well it just was a bad bad scene we're gonna take time out we got hey remember pyt fabulous one still to come Come here, big man. Come here, Ox. Woo! 
Yeah, I know you're all proud of it. It wouldn't be the first place that they outlawed the heart punch. You know, I want to tell you people a story. Four short years ago, two men took me down in a ring. They hyperstended both of my legs and tore my colleges. For one solid year, I laid like a big goof in a Hollywood bed. Nobody came to visit me, no cards. And finally, one day, a goofy doctor come up there with his bill, and he said, Ox, I've got to tell you something. You know, you're not an old man yet, but the way your legs are, you'll be lucky to walk again, let alone wrestle. You know, I felt sorry for myself that night, but then I realized that if I came up with a weapon in wrestling, that I could overcome all these people. So I want to tell them, and I want them to listen very good. As I laid in that bed, these two guys deliberately tore my legs up and almost made me a cripple. I might not have been able to walk for the rest of my life. So I said, if they can hurt me that way, why can't I hurt somebody else? So all I can tell all these people, Jerry Lawler, Austin Idol, Eddie Marlin, anybody, if I raise this heart punch and knock you down and you don't get back up, too bad. <laughs> Marvel fantasy. The great Ock Baker. Now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the greatest team in the history of professional wrestling, the P. Russell will say one thing. You hear Harley Davis out here talking and running his mouth, talking about he's got a big mouth. You know, everybody knows Harley Davis got a big mouth. You know what we're going to do? We're going to stuff that motorcycle boot down his mouth. You understand that? We're going to stuff his, that boot down his mouth because we have showed them boys for the last two or three times that we're the best. There are no class for the PYT Express. You have, you have convinced them. Demon, baby, the demon. I'm going to tell you, baby, you never seen nothing in your life like the PYT Express. We're the hardest item around here. And for that fact, we're the hardest item anywhere. So, Harley Davis, I'm going to tell you one thing. You big and you bad, baby, but you can be had. We done showed you in the past what the PYT Express is all about. It's all about. It's all about. I'm going to tell you all about. got enough to worry about with a fabulous one. You know what, Lance right I want to say this. If my granddaddy even knew that we wrestled this piece of trash, he'd turn over this grave. Yeah, you That's got right, it. Baby. That's right. I'll show you what we're all about right now. Yeah, you can make believers out of a lot of people if you can do anything with them. Tommy Wildfire Rich and Eddie Gilbert will be going right against the PYT Express. And that bout is coming up right now. For the ring, the fabulous ones in there, the PYT Express, out of there. What a fight, they got one. Oh, well, go ahead, that's what we came for, for Jim. Yeah. All right, Dave, let's go ahead with the introductions, and maybe we'll be out of all the jackets and the shades and all that stuff by that time. It'll be one fall, 10 minute time limit, total weight 437 pounds from Memphis and Union City, Tennessee. The PYT Express, Norvell Austin, and Stagger Lee, and going against them at a total of 434 pounds from Hendersonville and Lexington, Tennessee. Tommy Rich, Eddie Gilbert, the fabulous ones. Underway with Stagger Lee against Tommy Rich. Fargo's truck coming off the road. It'd be funny and dance around, baby, but we ain't dancing. This is the PYT Express, the gayest team in the world, baby. PYT Express, Stagger Lee with a right fist. Tommy Rich fired into the ropes. The boot. But the fabulous one grabs it, spins it around, and a right hand puts PYT Express on the mat. Who threw the first punch? Who threw it? Tell me, Dave Brown. Right there. Who threw the first punch? Well, I'm not sure. You've already stumbled around. You know who threw the first punch. Eddie Gilbert in there now. 
Norvell Austin in for PYT. Off the rope. The shoulder by Norvell Austin. And he goes and lets him go by a set. Rolls him down to the mat. No hair, Jimmy. I was watching that one. There was no hair pulling. Need to get together on the story, Jim. You're claiming hair pulling. Norvell's claiming he had his tights pulled. Actually, it was a nice, clean takedown, no doubt about it, by Eddie Gilbert. Norvell is going to try to pick him up, slam him. Eddie Gilbert refusing to be picked up. Norvell instead is body slam. Uh-uh. Norvell Austin back on his feet over to the corner, and the PYT Express slowed a bit here by the fabulous ones, Eddie Gilbert. Now facing Stagger Lee. Back in the corner. The, boot, the right fist. Who threw the first punch there, Jimmy Hart? And the second one. Stagger Lee, right fist. Eddie Gilbert reverses and out of the turnbuckle. Down to the mat. Who was in the way right there? Cal, who was right? Who, who threw the first punch there, Jim? Novell Austin coming back in. Tommy Rich in there. Boy, it's having some words. We're going to have a clean scientific match. Look at Tommy Rich. Look at that heathen. Look at him. All of them in the ring. Tommy Rich, Norvell Austin going at each other. Eddie Gilbert and Stagger Lee going at each other. Look out, Jimmy Hart. Grab by the hair. Tommy Rich blasts him. And Hart kneels with the right fist. He steps into the ring. And referee says, ring it. Hart in the ring has grabbed Eddie Gilbert out here on the floor. It's Stagger Lee and Tommy Rich. Now they roll Tommy back into the ring. All five of them in there. Hart in the middle of the ring. Uh, Stagger Lee is holding Tommy Rich. Hart beating on him. Eddie Gilbert working on Norvell down on the floor. Hart leaps off the apron. But Eddie nailed him. Look out. Over in the crowd, Eddie. Going back after Norvell down here on the floor. Back into the crowd. Eddie Gilbert, Norvell, Austin still working on each other. Hart holding Eddie Gilbert up from behind. Rich and Stagger Lee going at it across the way. Rich and Norvell back in the ring. Eddie Gilbert, but everybody back in the ring. We've got a free for all going here. Oh, the referee nailed by Stagger Lee, Jerry Calhoun, down on the floor. Rich throws Stagger Lee over the top rope, grabs a chair. Eddie Gilbert, meanwhile, kicked out of the ring by Norvell. Norvell grabbing him from behind over there. There you see him going by. And into the crowd on the other side. What a brawl, no question about it. Good one, Doug. Oof. Down on the floor, it's Eddie Gilbert, Stagger Lee, Tommy Rich, Norvell Austin. Referee trying to get him to quit. Oh, that time Eddie Gilbert nailed uh, referee Jerry Calhoun. He was, he was nailed by both, both teams. Uh, I think Eddie was just defending himself and didn't realize what was happening uh, when, uh, when he smacked the referee. Wild and woolly action.
question, no question about it. Eddie going back over to check and see uh, Make sure about, a thing, about yeah. a lady that was knocked out of the uh, bleachers in there when they piled in. So the fans go out. 2.46, the time of the mouse. They leap that long and brawl. Yeah, longer than that, really. Four or five minutes on the brawl. Uh, the Fabs do win it by disqualification when Hart jumps in the ring. Well, we'll take time out. we got more action coming up. Be back in just a moment. We've had a lot of conversation here about it and regarding Eddie Marlin. We want to hear something from Eddie and see what Eddie had to say about it. Let's take a listen. Thank you, Lance. I've got something on my chest. I felt like I need to get it off and get it off today. So I asked Randy to come over and bring his camera while it's fresh in my mind. You know, it seems like uh, the job of the promoter these days is hazardous duty. Every time I go around the ring when Jimmy Hart and his first family is involved in the ring, I wind up on the bad side of it. At Jimmy Hart, most recently, you had Ox Baker to jump me. I got in the ring. I didn't get in the ring to fight. I just got in the ring to try to get you and Ox out of the ring. After y'all jumped me and you got out of the ring, you sent Ox Baker back in the ring to do more damage to Eddie Marlin. All right, Jimmy, I want to tell you something, buddy. I've got an open contract on you, Ox Baker, all the wrestlers in this area. Now, like I say, I've had it up to here with you interfering. You jumping me. I'm not a wrestler. Now, I know I'm old, out of shape, hadn't been in the ring in a long time, and I don't say that I can whip Ox Baker, but Jerry Lawler can whip him. And I feel like Years from now, when I'm in a nursing home, Jimmy Hart, I can come out and whip you. And I'm going to try it. Now, like I said, I've got the open contract. I want to sign a match, and I'm not going to make it definite until I talk it over with Lawler, because it's going to put him in a bad situation having me as a partner. But I want a match with Jerry Lawler and Eddie Marlin against Ox Baker and Jimmy Hart. Like I say, I'm not going to make it definite until I talk to Lawler. Get his approval. There's one other thing, Jimmy Hart. I've got a brother. He referees all over the territory, and he does a good job. He gets to the arenas early. He wants to play cards. He loves to play cards. One thing he likes to do better than playing cards is to fight. So I'm not going to try to fool you. I want the deck stacked in my favor. I'm going to sign him as a special referee. So, Jerry Lawler, if you approve this, we're going to have the match. We're going to add it on. Eddie Marlin and Jerry Lawler versus Ox Baker and Jimmy Hart with Thomas Marlin, the special referee. Kind of like the sound of that. We get the man out here and uh, find out whether he likes the sign out of it. The king back out with us again. Well, he Pretty, I, I love the way he said it. I'm not going to fool you, man. I want the deck stacked in my way. I'm going to have Thomas. This well, that's right. that's exactly right. Now, Eddie it. came to me with this proposal, and you know, the first thing I said, um, now, Ed, well, I wanted I... to make sure you know exactly what you're doing. I wanted to make sure that this is what you want, and he decided, and he talked with his brother Thomas, and he said, that's it. This is the way that he can, uh, he can show Hart what it's like. He can, you know, the thing about Hart is, as I said out here before, he has got the world's biggest ego. And there is nothing more than that will crush heart and that ego of his than to have Eddie Marlin, poor old decrepit ancient Eddie Marlin, as Hart likes to call him, pin Hart right in the middle of the ring or bust his little skinny nose right into the flat against his face. That would just, that, I know that would hurt Hart worse than losing the belts or, or the entire members of his first family. All of that put together wouldn't, wouldn't uh, even come close to the humiliation that Hart would suffer at the hands of Eddie Marlin. So I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be double duty. That's right, I'm going to be back against Humongous. The good thing about this match with Humongous is the fact that I don't have to worry about any outside interference. You saw in that match that, that after all the abuse I had taken at the hands of this jerk, they still had to call down Neidhart. They still had to call down Ox Baker. Hart still had to get in the ring. Well, this week, thanks to the $1,000 fine, we won't have to worry about any of that. Now, I do want to say this about Ox Baker. 
Now, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people have heard, we've, we've come out here and, and said it a couple of weeks ago about Ox Baker's reputation, but I don't know if the people really, you know, uh, if they believe this or not, but let me tell you, this is an honest-to-goodness fact. A man by the name of Ray Gunkel and a man by the name of Alberto Torres, two fine wrestlers, are no longer with us. I mean, they died after matches and after being hit by Ox Baker and his heart punch. Ray Gunkel died like five minutes after the heart punch, Alberto Torres about 30 minutes later. Now, you know, when the, this, this, is a, this is a move, they've, they've come to me in the past and tried to uh, talk to me about not using a pile driver, banning the pile driver because it's due, too dangerous. Well, I think this heart punch is, uh, is a move. If anything should be banned, that should be. And I just had a little piece of film here I wanted to show because, you know, I wanted to know what the effects of this thing could be. So uh, I've got a little piece of film with, a, with my doctor here, and he was kind of explaining to me what could take place. And if we could show that, then I got something else I'd like to say afterwards. But I was you know, a lot of the people out there think that uh, the wrestlers don't get hurt that often, or at least not that seriously. And uh, all I want to do is assure everybody in the wrestling profession, one of the main things you need to know or need to have is a very good doctor. And fortunately, over the years, I've been uh, able to know a few, uh, like uh, Dr. Richard Ennis, who nursed me through the broken leg, and Dr. Burroughs, uh, who helped me with the internal bleeding. But now, without a doubt, my favorite of all, my personal physician, Dr. Uh, Lee Sammons. And uh, Dr. Sammons, I just want to come by today and and get some information basically for myself about uh, about this heart punch now we have a character in here by the name of ox baker who uh, his his claim to fame his maneuver is a thing he calls a heart punch in which the guy weighs about uh, 320 pounds and he just hauls off and blasts you right in the chest um, as, as hard as he can with a thing called a heart punch and two men um, in the past have died from this and I just want your opinion on what you know what this could do to you first there don't do it stay away from him but if you have to go near him let me tell you a little bit about what can happen okay the area right here in the central part of your chest is right behind the breastbone is where the heart is located and many people think the heart is on the left and this is incorrect mm -hmm. i have a few pictures and things here that i can show you about but any kind of force that you describe that hits right here in the center of the chest can rupture the heart can blast the blood vessels, can cause bleeding, uh, any of these things, and that's death, right? That's the finish. That's the end. I, I would not want you to put yourself in that kind of predicament. All right, well, now, I think we have some x-rays that you could show us a little bit better. Can we look at those? Yes, let me show you these. Jerry, what we have here are the x-rays of a normal chest mm -hmm. in a man, uh, let's say, of your size. Now, this shadow that you see right here in the central part is the outline of the heart. This is the right lung, this is the left. So it is right there in the there center. There it is, right in the center. And the thing I'd like to point out to you is that looking from the side, mm -hmm. you will see that this area here is the heart, this is the breastbone. Notice the small distance between the backbone and the back side of the, the heart. Now, if and, the, and the, this is the front of the heart, this close to the this close, this, to your close this close. I didn't realize the it. force that would be transmitted through here will squeeze this like a grape, and the end result would be exactly that. You can rupture, you can uh, blow out the ventricles, you can rupture the blood vessels. You may have a delayed bleeding episode, but uh, in any event, uh, it's a very dangerous maneuver. Now you were telling me earlier a lot of a lot of the uh, deaths that result from car accidents were not necessarily resulted from people being thrown through a windshield or anything. It comes from uh, hitting the steering wheel. Is that right? Crush injuries from the forward moving forces of the chest against the steering wheel has produced many many heart injuries and this is a well-known fact that's been going on for years well listen i want to thank you for giving us all this information and hopefully i don't have to come to see you with uh, complaints of a heart punch okay we'll be watching thank you Doc. thank you if you have to go see him brother it won't be from that all i can say is you know uh as much as i'd like to thank the doctor for being on the program and everything I don't think that the wrestling uh, wrestling show is a place that you need to be showing x-rays and diagrams of people's heart. What I'm saying is there's no place in wrestling for a thing like a heart punch. I got into wrestling to compete, to see who's a better athlete, not to take a chance on getting killed. And that's exactly what can happen with a guy as big as Art, uh, Ox Baker hits you in the chest. He can kill you. He's done it to two men. And all I want to say is this, Ox Baker, the match is set for Monday night. It's going to be me and Eddie Marlin who probably shouldn't be in a ring, but 
he's going to be there to take care of heart. Now, I want to tell you this, Baker. If you got any thoughts in that pea brain of yours of pulling out one of those heart punches on Eddie Marlin or myself, you better think again, brother. Because if, when you're taking a chance on taking somebody's life, then that's pretty drastic. And I'm going to take some pretty drastic measures myself. So you keep that in mind down there, Ox Baker. If you got any thought in that head of yours of using one, I'll do something to you, brother, that you have never seen in your life. That's a promise. Okay, Jerry, thanks for coming out. I'll tell you one thing for a fact. If nothing else, it'll sure make you think a second time. Well, let me tell you what's coming up down there Monday. By golly, we got a pile of it coming to the Coliseum. Ticket office open until 5 o'clock today, and of course, open all day Monday, and you can pick your tickets up in advance. Bell time, 8 o'clock, with our daylight saving time in. So we want you to remember that. Still got time. Regular prices, by the way, on it. Let me be sure and jot this down, because I did not have it on the card. Added match, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, let's take a look at the opening bout. Doggone good tag match. Look at this team. Jap Assassin, Ox Baker, going against Rick McCord and Brickhouse Brown. That's going to be a whale of an opener, so you'll want to be there at 8 o'clock. Bugsy McGraw in a single match will be going against Pope Chop Cash. And then another single match with Jim Neidhart, and he's going to go against a tough little Englishman, Scott Shannon. That'll be an interesting bout, to say the very least. And a biker roulette match with Harley Davidson and Dirty Rhodes against the PYT Express. Now, as Harley explained this to me, or you heard him, hey, I didn't know any more about it than you do, but he says there's going to be two poles out there, two boxes in one of the boxes, and the wrestlers will not know which one. In one of the boxes, there will be one of the biker's boots that Harley uh, is famous for. And so when the wrestler goes up to pole, uh, he's hoping he's guessing which one the boot is in and which one is just full of air. That's the biker roulette match. Harley Davidson, Dirty Roads, BYT Express. Okay, and then we've got a Southern Tag title match with the fabulous ones going against some of the biggest guys you've ever seen in your life. They formerly held those titles. I'm talking about Tommy Wildfire Rich and Eddie Gilbert. They're facing the Zambui Express. That'll be a dandy. Return grudge match, Dutch Mantell, Rick Rude. Dutchman looking for a little action out of that on some of Rude's hide, you can bet you. Then a return international title match. Randy Savage, the macho man who currently has the uh, international heavyweight title, will be facing the universal heartthrob, Austin Idol, and that'll be a doggone good bout. We'll be looking at a return double title match. That is the Mid-America heavyweight title match and the Southern heavyweight Humongous currently holds, Jerry with the Mid-America, and it will be title against title. And that's not all. Regular prices, and can you believe we are going to add to it the Jimmy Hart, Ox Baker, Jerry Lawler, Eddie Marlin tag match that will be taking place that evening too. Just a very, very big night of action. We'll, maybe he'll make your plans to get your tickets up in the five today and not pick them up on Monday before the match is in there. Here he is, the heart drive. All right, sir, uh, before I get into anything right now, you know, it's already been, uh, I go here through the grapevine that uh, Randy Savage, Macho Man Savage, call him what you want to, has had a few comments that he made previously. I personally would just love to hear him right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, we'll roll that tape right now. Let's listen to the Macho. Memphis, Tennessee, Monday night. Yeah, Monday night. Yeah, uh, Austin Idol, Universal Heartthrob. Yeah, what you did on last Monday night will be remembered forever. Yeah, I will. Because uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage doesn't forget. Do I forget? Does our family forget? No, we don't. No, we don't. You know what take you home means? Yeah, Monday night in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, last Monday night, do I remember? Yeah, I do. I remember like a nightmare. And if you're complaining about Jim the Animal Nineheart hitting the ring, hey, man, I'll guarantee you something right now. It was all I could do not to break your neck or take you home, man. I'm getting the names of your family, man. I'm finding out who your kids are. Yeah, Monday night in Memphis, Tennessee, you're looking at the international heavyweight champion. You understand that, Austin Idol, man? You have never had the belt, no, because the macho man Randy Savage, yeah, has got the belt. And I will keep the belt forever. You want to bet against me, Austin Idol? Do you want to bet against me? Guaranteed personified one thing. 
Monday night in Memphis, Tennessee, you're going to find out that I played baseball, yeah, a lot longer than you did, man. And I'm ready for you, man, because I'll tell you what, 3 o'clock in the morning, yesterday, last night, yeah, out in my balcony, stark naked, looking at the clouds separating, looking in the sky, yeah, doing the workout my particular way. And I've thought of more things for you, more things for you, and I will apply them Monday night in Memphis, Tennessee, yeah. Savage. A little strange, to say the least. Well, you know, uh, Randy Savage said he claimed to be a great baseball player one time. Now, I'm not claiming to be no uh, uh, Mike Schmidt or no Dave Kingman, but if you remember quite well, Lance, last Monday night, I tagged one. I mean, I laid a Louisville slugger right across that jerk's forehead, darling, and as far as I'm concerned, I knocked the cover off that ball. I hit a home run on Monday night, but the fact remains that Randy Savage is still the international heavyweight champion. But, you know, I just heard him make a statement. He said that he is going to be, be the champion forever. You know, I worked real hard for that international heavyweight champion, Lance. I went all the way to Tokyo, Japan to beat Terry Funk for it. I worked real hard. I worked just as hard to get the respect from the wrestling fans here in Memphis just as hard as I worked to get that belt. You know, it was one year ago exactly that Austin I was rated the most hated wrestler in the country. It was one year ago when I would come down the aisle in Memphis, Tennessee, and wrestling fans would stand up on their feet, and they'd look at the aisle, and they'd scream, and they'd holler, and they'd snicker, and they'd boo, and they'd throw things at me, and they hated my guts. But I did a lot to erase that, darling. Now I'm telling you one thing, Savage. You may be the champ now, but after Monday night, you're going to be the chump. You may be the hero right now, but after Monday night, you're going to be the zero, darling. Like the old saying goes, Lance, you either soar with the eagles or you scratch with the chickens. And Monday night, darling, I'm going to feed you a lot of chicken feed because you're going to be scratching. It's my time to get my belt back, and that's exactly what I'm going to do Monday night. Come on, from the hot crowd. We're going to take time out now, and we'll be back in just one moment. time limit match total weight 455 pounds from memphis tennessee keith robertson and from parts unknown the pink panther going against him total weight of 518 pounds from florida bugsy mcgraw and his partner from oil Cross, texas dutch mantel one fall 10 minute time limit jerry calhoun the referee and boy he hopes he has an easier time this match than he did the last one i guarantee you i tell you anything has got to be in the nature of an improvement for him because that last one he really got battled around in there we're ready to go with Bucky starting out against keith robinson and uh keith Giving away some poundage. He's a pretty good sized fella himself, but he's giving away some poundage to Bugsy. Hip tosses him down on the deck. Bugsy puts Robertson into the rope. Backdrop coming off of the air. Bugsy McGraw. Dutch end with Robinson. Body slam, Keith. Pink Panther leaning in to get a tag, and he does. Panther and Dutch Mantel. Hey, for whatever time we're going to have, we've got a sick man with uh, Jerry Lawler, Scott Shannon, Brickhouse, Brown going against Jim Neidhart, Rick Rude, and Porkchop. He dwarfs the Panthers. Bang! Pops him down hard. Boy, that has to hurt. Drops on him again. Bugs picks him up. Another slam down hard. Tag on the Dutchman. Dutch getting up a little steam. He dropped that elbow in. He had a head of steam going with him. 
Boy, you could tell that one was over. Dutch was moving when he dropped on him with that arm. A minute 48 seconds the time. Came flying across that ring. Uh, that was an interesting move by the Dutchman. First, you see uh, Bug slamming it down. Now, watch Dutch. He's really getting ahead of steam up here. Here he comes. And the Panther. He's taking out of that. Wow. He's still over there shaking it off, and I don't blame him one bit. We've got some big action, a six-man match. It looks like we're going to have a minute or two for it. We'll take time out and be back in just a moment. Fall down here on the floor, Dave, with the Fabs and the PYG. Impressive win by Bugsy and Dutch Mantell. The scissors room. Ravishing Rick Rose. Are not looking good today, Les, in my normal attire, I might add. Without the dress you're referring to, obviously. Les, you were in Memphis Monday night. Did you see what I did to Busy Dutch Mantell? Huh? I saw. Uh, let me tell you something. Oil Trough, Texas, number one citizen. I don't ever want to go to Oil Trough. What is Oil Trough? Nothing, baby. Nothing. Now, the man, what you want to do, get even with me? The man's in the hole. Stay down, Dutch Mantell. You're a punk. I don't know. Rick, you will find out how long a memory Dutch Mantell has. He doesn't forget, guys. Baby, to pull that this is the future in professional wrestling right here. Ravishing Rick Rude. Look at the most beautiful ballet right here, Angel, in the history of professional wrestling. Look at this body. Look at Dutch Mantell's belt body. I promise you, Dutch, you've had it because it's a great Take mess, a look, baby. Dutch Mantell. Look at this body. Look at these biceps. Look at the triceps. I see, I see, Jimmy. Aren't you impressed, Russell? I'm impressed. Well, you should be, and we've got Aren't I looking out. good, Lance? Aren't I looking oh, good? You can sell your let's, soul for hey. a body like this, brother. Okay. Let's forget that. And just let me say one thing to you. Well, go ahead. You don't know too much about Dutch Mantell if you think you can. I know right. all I want to know about Dutch Mantell. I know he can't lick his lips, let alone step in the ring with the ravishing one, baby. And look okay. who's back, baby. The Zambui Express right uh -huh. here. Woo! Yes, I know. Me and the Mr. Mohammed, we going on a world tour around the world. And one thing I want to say to the famous one is this. You can bring the belt out and give it to Mr. Mo me and Mr. Mohammed, or we can take them. But it won't take for five minutes. Either way, the Zamboy is back, is back, and we're here to stay. Well, there you hear it. Okay, that's enough. Thank you all. Can I tell you? Okay, Dave, we got rid of Hart for a minute. At least let's see if we can find out what's happening around the territory. All right, championship wrestling tonight in Mariana, Arkansas, at Anna Strong School. Austin Idol will be there. Ravishing one, Rick Rude will be there, too. Ox Baker, Harley Davidson, McGraw, Zambui Express, Brickhouse Brown, all of them tonight in Mariana, Arkansas. Tomorrow night, championship for you, Dutch, because you do pretty well yourself. Now, I can do my own talking last, but I appreciate it. Now, I got one thing to say to Rick Rude. Now, Rude, we had a little meeting out here just to, at the start of this program, and the end result was the next man who comes in and sticks his nose into somebody else's business, he's going to be fined $1,000. Now, Rude, last Monday night, you dodged the bullet, and the reason you dodged that bullet is because you had your old buddy Jim Neidhart come mm -hmm. in there and help you out. Now, I had you down, I had you going, I had you beat, and Neidhart stuck his nose in. But we're going to see the next time we meet Rude, how much you and that Nightheart, how tight you are. Now, you lead everybody to believe you're buddy, buddy, and you get along great, and you go out, drink beer, and smoke cigars. Well, we're going to see how tight you are, because the next time he comes in, it's a $1,000 fine, and I don't think he likes you $1,000 worth. So, Rude, this is between me and you, and I don't like you talking about my hometown of Oil Trough, because if you don't know where Oil Trough is, I'm not going to tell you. And if you ever want to go there, you wouldn't get but two feet down the street. One of the old boys come out and say, boy, you don't belong in this town, and you'd hightail it out of there. So, Rude, if you think I'm a punk and you don't think I can lick my lips, well, we're going to see how tough you are Monday night. You're a low-life, egg-sucking dog. You can take that to the bank. I don't care how you want to take it. And you get good and mad and have heart slap you around and give you a good pep talk. But when you get in that ring Monday night, this is the showdown time, and I'm going to win it, baby. I love it. Going to see that one. We'll be back. Got that big six band coming up in just a moment. All right, Ali, we've been talking about it uh, today. We've got it coming up right now. The King, Jerry Lawler, Scott Shannon, Brickhouse Brown, 
Going again. Jim Neidhart, ravishing Rick Rude, and Pork Chop K. There comes Jerry and Scott and Brick out, uh, ready for the action. And on this side of the ring, this is pretty doggone formidable. Oh, yes, it is. Here, Dave, I want to tell you. Rude Chops and Jim Neidhart. Okay, we're ready for the introduction. Expiration of time match, introducing at a total weight of 746 pounds from Reno, Nevada, Jim Neidhart from Beverly Hills, California, Rick Rude from Washington, D.C., Fort Chop Cash, going against him at a total of 672 pounds from Liverpool, England, Scott Shannon from Miami, Florida, Brickhouse Brown, and from Memphis, Tennessee, the King, Jerry Lawler. Match for the expiration of time. Six-man tag team rules in effect. Jerry Calhoun is the referee. Okay. And, of course, uh, the team over here, they got an out number five to uh, three because they got Angel and Hart. Let's ring the bell. We're ready to go. Starting out will be Brick against uh, Pork Chop Cash. Come on. And, uh, of course, Lawler and Scott Shannon waiting. Neidhart and Rude waiting in a hard tie-up. Look at that chop going after Brickhouse. Whip into the turnbuckle. Got an arm. Look at the Brick go. Big drop here. Chop. Move, Got to give Chop credit. He held up, <laughs> slipped out there, and dropped that elbow on him. And now he turns him over to the handle. And it's a legal elbow, too, wasn't it, Russell? Yes, it was. Thank you very much, Lance. Jimmy, we don't do anything but tell it like it is. Beautiful. Tell that one like it is. Knee right to the forehead. Yeah, you saw the knee, which was illegal because he was outside the ropes and was not legally in there. You know, I told everybody they named a dance after this brick house. It's called a jerk, and that's exactly what he is, baby, a big jerk. Man, oh man. Double team between Rude and Neidhart on Brickhouse. Was he a male go-go dancer? Is that what he was? What was he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. And a young man pounding his way back at Rick Rude. They're holding him over in the corner. Brickhouse needs to get back over and get a tag on Shannon or on the King. Porkchop in there, and his brick house comes back, staggered back towards the corner. Neidhart grabs him by the trunk. Now he's holding him on the rope. Jimmy, I don't hear you praising all of that. You probably would, though. Oh, you weren't watching. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Been having a little pep talk each week before TV, and I think it's done a world of good, don't you, Russell? Yeah. That's probably what prompts Neidhart to jump in on everybody's match the way he's been doing. You know, I've noticed a few running footballers and the idols and, the, and all these other groups out there, too, brother, but you never talk about that, do you, well, Russell? All right, hey, listen, you heard the announcement. Thousand bucks to anybody that runs in. So, uh. Two tough fights, because we're tired of interference. Oh, Chop takes Brickhouse down to the mat. He has got to get over and get a tag on either Shannon or Lawler. Brickhouse fighting his way back. Brickhouse, tag of the team. Lawler using the fist or not? He is using the fist. Because We got about a minute of time left in this match. Lawler banging away on Neidhart. Rick Rude, there's a tag on Scott Shannon. Big backdrop from Porkchop. An on Porkchop from Scott Shannon. He goes about it in a quiet way, Dave, but this Shannon's a tough son of a gun, too, man. Yes, I'll is. tell you. Out of Liverpool, England. Really well-schooled in fundamentals. Backdrop. Rude puts him over. Hey, baby, we got him now, baby. Our time is just about expired. Waller 
take three that dropped it down. Two, three, got it. The tag was legal, too. Yeah, who tagged it? We're gonna take time off. We'll be back with just a moment. to that for two minutes while we've been away here and you're talking about quick down it was a legal tag the referee said one two three let me tell you something jerry lawler i'm gonna pay my thousand dollars right now because brother i'm gonna get even with you i don't care where it is i don't care wherever it might be i'm gonna do you in brother for my thousand bucks coming right now let me tell you something too, Eddie Marlon. You're not gonna get out of it like this. You want a match, you said something, baby. You said you were worn out. You were finished, and you're right, you are old. And this is 1984, not 1954. Ox Baker, I promise you this. I've instructed Ox Baker to give you a hard punch because I will be the new promoter around this area. You understand that? And when I see him, he's gonna be doing this with your own heart. You're gonna fall out on the floor, baby. You're gonna hold your own heart. I promise you this, Ox Baker's gonna get rid of it. You're gonna be sorry for every interference in any match, and you do, Eddie Marlin. Me and Ox Baker against Waller Hill, and I can't wait. I can't wait. Hey, you baby. forgot one thing. Thomas Marlin is the referee. Oh, that makes Why it you're... better. He's got everything stacked in his favor. See what I'm saying? Well, let me tell you something. I've got a trick up my sleeve too, baby. I've got a trick up my sleeve. Mark my words, Eddie Marlin. You will not be on this TV show next week, and that is a problem. Okay, Jimmy, take it out. Stop bothering the people. Just get out. Okay, uh, opening match today, Harley Davidson in here going against Rooster Cogburn. Harley won it a little over a minute. Humongous defeated Ken Raper in, uh, in a little over a minute. It was the fabulous ones defeating the PYT Express. Boy, that one really developed into a brawl all over the studio here, but the fabulous ones got the win due to interference.